I'm going to do another uh, video <coughs> without slides. So those uh, of you who love to hate on my uh, my uh, waving paper in front, I'll I'll give you a break on that again. <coughs> this is a um, a discussion of sleep apnea, um, <coughs> and it's a personal discussion. I have uh, for at least the past thirty years in my mid twenties, late thirties or somewhere in between there, that 15-year period, I um, developed uh, what, what I thought was early morning awakening. I call that early morning awakening. There's actually a clinical term for that. You go to sleep just fine. Uh, you don't have any problems with that, but you tend to wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning. Um, <clears throat> I had it for years before I began to understand, I began to study it. I'm sometimes um, incredibly... Um, slow to pick up on things. Uh, and in fact, for decades, I never woke up in the same bed that I went to sleep in. I'd, uh, uh, I'd go to sleep. Uh, I'm married uh, with my wife, and then I'd get up in the, on a couch. Uh, I'd wake up at two or three in the morning. Um, I always blamed it on her. Uh, she does wiggle a little bit during her sleep, but... <clears throat> Um, at the end, I finally began to uh, decide that it was hereditary. The uh, EMA, early morning awakening, the neurological form, is hereditary, and my dad had the same thing. <clears throat> it's very interesting that I, I, I found out, again, just a few years ago, very few years ago, in my um, late 50s, that my dad had the same thing. Uh, it was one of those things where I was complaining about it to my mom, and she said, oh, you, you know, your dad had that. Well, <clears throat> what's interesting is uh, I've been a, a lot of my work over the past couple of years has been with uh, the dental community, and the dental community has done a lot of work in um, what they call OSA. They don't call that anymore uh, obstructive sleep apnea. There's another term for it, and I forget what it is. It's basically difficulty in breathing with sleeping. Uh, they looked at me, and I, I do have some teeth problems. Um, you may have noticed, even at age 60, I'm wearing uh, uh, Invisalign. I, I've had a problem with this teeth being pushed back. It's been dark. And <clears throat> uh, some of the leaders that I worked with said, Ford, you got to get that tooth fixed. Yeah. It's a distraction for the dental community. <laughs> uh, and it is. I... I finish uh, one of my lectures and, and one of the dentists invariably would say, you know, I can fix that for you. So <clears throat> bottom line is I'd been cheap all my life, too cheap to get it fixed. I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet, uh, spend a couple of bucks and get it fixed. What's interesting, and at this point I wasn't totally surprised, my early morning awakening seemed to decrease. <clears throat> And here's why. Um, I started to get into this just a minute ago. The, um, I have a very what high arch. I think they call it like a Gothic uh, church arch or something. Uh, but I have very narrow teeth. And I also had uh, my teeth were pushed back just a little bit. I have a family member. One of my kids has the very same thing to a very significant degree. Uh, that child also has significant uh, sleep breathing problems. Very significant. Um, <clears throat> connect another couple of dots medically. Uh, you may remember I did a series on atrial fib. Um, when I was seeing my doc regarding atrial fib, he asked me about two things over and over again, high blood pressure and sleep apnea. And he said, you know, you can get guys that are like you, they're otherwise healthy, but uh, they have any problems with hypertension. I've had hypertension for a dec over a decade, um, but uh, had not had had not confirmed my atrial fib until recently. Um, I was continuing to have problems with sleep apnea. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that high arch and the narrow um, uh, the narrow structure of my uh, my arch. Push, tended to push my tongue back. 
And what I have found, it's been over the past few weeks, I've begun to uh, take the tip of my tongue and move it out beyond, just beyond my teeth. When I do that, I notice that I have, I'm able to breathe. As soon as I pull the tip of my tongue back to touch the gum, my upper gum, the two sides of my soft palate will push back and I'll, have, I'll, uh, I'll wake up. And I actually confirmed it this morning. I've been doing a lot of, um, of um, mindfulness and that was a part of my mindfulness exercise. I was able to, woke up two, three in the morning, like I often do, uh, did some mindfulness, was focusing on the, my tongue position, and sure enough, um, was almost back to sleep, woke up, noticing that my tongue had slipped back. So I'm going to have somebody take a look at that. I, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate your interest. Uh, for those of you who want to hate on some uh, unusual ideas, I would suggest that you go ahead and investigate this a little bit uh, more deeply before you decide that uh, that there's no truth and that I'm just a uh, a harebrained scientist looking for different uh, ideas. Thank you again for your attention and your interest.